Good afternoon. Welcome to another Wednesday Network Educate Invite Business Support Session. It's great to have everybody along here today, whether you're actually here or whether you're watching this on a recording sometime over the next 7 to 14 days. We're very lucky today to have Matt Alderton and Laurie McKenzie from BX Networking. Uh, they're going to have a chat to us today about strategic partnerships. Um, as I've said before, we actually started recording. These guys are super connectors. They, they, they know it. Uh, Matt, I, I can't speak highly enough about Matt. I have a, a strategic partnership with him with uh, BBX and BX Networking, and I think it's worked wonders for both of us over the last couple of years. So I'm looking forward to that chat. Just a uh, bit of a rundown of what we do. So we're just going to do a quick round the grounds, find out who's in the room, uh, and then we basically just hand over to Matt and he can tell us everything that he knows. So what we'll do, we'll start off on my screen, top right hand corner. Paul Skeen, how are you? You're on mute. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> now. The audio's not working. <laughs> Now he's on mute. <laughs> yeah, on mute. Okay. Oh, there we go. Mate, you you we can edit that bit out, mate. It's all good. New, all right. new laptop. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Paul Skeen from Fintrans. We provide financial solutions for small business owners. Thanks, Jason. All right. Thank you. Uh, Alan. G'day, I'm Alan Stevens. I'm a profiling and communication specialist, which means I help people to build, read each other to build stronger relationships. I'm also the creator of the Hashtag Initiative and the Campfire, Campfire Project, where men and women can come together and have respectful conversations. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. And first time with us, John Peck. Hey, to y'all. I'm uh, coming in live from Hong Kong. So, um, wow. I'm a, uh, <laughs> so I'm a business coach. I help the business owners and managers to develop a lifelong system of uh, problem solving and creativity. Beautiful. Very creative solutions. Thank you, John. Hi, Jetta. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Jaga, and I am Jay Sun's executive assistant. Yep, so she works very closely with me on this. So all the stuff that you see go up in the network, she's, she's the ball bugger that has to then put it all up on the websites and the Facebook and everything like that. And uh, yeah, it takes a lot of time. So she does a wonderful job. Uh, Rashid. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am a business and sales coach who specializes in helping business owners actually create wealth from their businesses. Because it's one thing to have a business, it's another thing to actually have money. Uh, and I specialize in helping people sell more to uh, high-end uh, clients and reduce sales cycles. Beautiful. Thank you, Rishi. Good afternoon, Mo. Good afternoon. I have an online business called Best Buy Trade Supplies. We sell uniform trade products, uh, hydration, and PPE on there. Beautiful. Thank you, Mo. Good afternoon, Jacqueline. Hi, Jason. Thank you. Jacqueline Price, consultant with ACN. I reduce the running costs for your business and your household with a free comparison. Beautiful. Thank you, Jacqueline. Good afternoon, Loz. Hey, I'm Loz, or Loreen, and I'm the operations director for BX and in charge of all of our global launches. I also have my own business, which is superconnector.com.au, and I help my clients connect with and engage and nurture their clients. Beautiful. Thank you, Loz. Martha. Hi, everyone. My name is Martha Mock. I'm a super confident coach. I help leaders to become more confident, giving them a safe space to put down their entrepreneur mask and build up their confidence again to face their day. I also help new coaches to find their first client. So that's what I do. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, Martha. Uh, Angela. Hi, I'm Angela Heiser. I'm a leadership and emotional and cultural intelligence trainer, and I help people make friends with all of their emotions. Beautiful. Thank you, Angela. Uh, who we got next? Derek. Hi, everybody. Derek Rogers from Thrive Moon Australia here. We empower people to be healthier, happier, and higher performing, and we do that through a range of training programs and follow-up coaching. Thank you. Beautiful. 
thank you, Derek. Hey, Phil, how are you, mate? Oh, I'm good. Good afternoon, Jade, and good afternoon, everyone. I'm Phil Moore from Phil Moore Designs. I'm a professional graphic designer, and I also love to create animated videos and 3D design. Beautiful. And you actually did our animation, which is really good. I really appreciate it. Thanks, mate. Hey, John. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is John Farrow. I am the BDM for B Connect, and I help connect business owners with the goal of bringing them a new business. Fantastic. Thanks, John. Hi, Jill. You're on mute, Jill. Nah. Nah. It's all good. I'll, I'll let them know. So Jill's another one of my VA guys. All right. So yeah, again, wonderful job. Does a lot of Facebook and a lot of research for us. Mr. Matt Alderson, how are you, sir? I'm fantastic. How are you? Oh, I'm very, very good. <laughs> um, I'm Matt from BX. We, uh, Loz and I run Australia's fastest growing business networking, also in New Zealand and kicking off in the US face to face in Texas, in Austin, uh, in uh February next year. So pretty excited about that. Nice. Uh, can, can I get back on team and, and come and do a, a bit of training over there, Matt? Join, sure. the, join the queue. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Now, Alison, are you there? Nope. Alison's not there. So, uh, Helen Morris, first time. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm also from New Zealand, and I'm an intuitive energy healer and life coach. And I also am a podcaster with the Grief Podcast. Beautiful. You're in uh, Road to Rua. Is that correct? That's correct. That's correct. Yeah, I was looking at your profile there and going, oh, that looks good. So I love Road to Rua. Apart from the smell. <laughs> the cell phone. Is, oh, there you go. So, uh, Faye. Hello, everyone. I'm Faye, um, Nazanin Majidi's virtual assistant. Beautiful. Uh, now, Elisa, I know you've got a message here. You're out on the road. Can you talk? Yes, I can. And I can even start the video briefly. So excuse me, I'm looking at five different screens. Hi, I'm Elisa and I'm working from home, as you might be able to see. And I have a company called Elwyn Media, which has a number of businesses. The primary one is out and about with Kids Magazine and website and social, where we have been around for 17 years now, telling Australian families about the best places to go and travel and what to buy and where to go. Um, I said that twice. I also have a company called Tourism Media Solutions, a business, and that has a lot of excellent writers and for websites and social media and help people that aren't experts in creating their own content. And that's me. I'm switching off again. <laughs> nice to meet you all. Nazanine, I bet that was your phone, wasn't it? Um, sorry, it's linked to my laptop. All Hello. Right. So, so do you want to introduce yourself and then put oh, yourself on mute, please? Sorry. Hi everyone, I'm, I am Nazarin Naz Majidi. I am national sales manager working for your mm -hmm. agent real estate that work with, we specialized in purchasing property in non-traditional space. So um, if you have crypto or um, any of the barter trade credit, we are specialized in helping you buy property with your business and um, basically non-traditional space. Yeah, well, thank you, Naz. Uh, oh, Hannah's just disappeared. I was about to jump onto her. So we've got uh, Darren, Darren Hooper. Good afternoon, all. There, Darren Hooper. I'm the general manager on the Central Coast of Unity Bank. We're a mutual bank owned by our members. And um, I specialise in the financial wellbeing of small to medium enterprise. Beautiful. Thank you, Darren. And latecomer, Paul Lang. Paul. Can you hear me? There you go, mate. Got you. God for that. Okay, great. Uh, I'm Paul. At, at some point, I'll get my video working again. Um, there we go. Yeah, right. Um, I'm Paul. I've am uh, been uh, 30 years in private equity venture capital, um, helping people grow their businesses and, and grow the asset value of the businesses that we've uh, we've invested in through primarily through optimization. So optimizing the processes, optimizing the systems, optimizing the mindset of people. Um, been back in Australia now for I don't know how long, but I lived most of my life overseas, based in Europe, and um, we still have our operate most of our operations over there. Beautiful, thank you, Paul and Hannah. Hi, everybody. My name is Hina Vea. I'm 
I like to call myself the business fixer. I come in and kind of give you a little bit of a health check with your business um, and fix up the back operations of, of, of everything goes. So yeah, nice to meet Fantastic. you all. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Hannah. Have I missed anybody? No? Oh, good. Fantastic. Okay. So what we're going to do, oh, do, Matt, do I need to give you screen share or... Yeah, I should be able to do that. The button's down the bottom here. No, you need to uh, enable. I've made, made you a co-host. So you and Loz you. are co-hosts. Excellent. So I'd like to do the, the formal introduction and, and welcome uh, Loz McKenzie and Matt Alderton from BX Networking. I've been in BX Networking for two years nearly now, uh, and I've learned a hell of a lot from these two people. Uh, so I, I, I am actually honoured the fact that they've agreed to come on and have a bit of a chat and talk to you guys. Mo disappeared as well. Here we go. Okay. So guys, take it away. All yours. Fantastic. Thanks, Jace. How long have I got? Just as a uh, you've got up to half an hour. Oh, beautiful. Okay. Just so I time this out nicely. Uh, thanks for having us along today, Jace. Uh, welcome, Loz, as well. Who's be working through this with us. You can stop and ask questions as we go. Uh, there's uh, there's plenty of time to do that. I've got a bit of a presentation today and I'll talk about uh, the key things that uh, are going to help you build some fantastic strategic partners. And as you can see, the number one best marketing strategy for your business is building referral partnerships or strategic partnerships. Uh, another term we call them is momentum partnerships. But it's about really connecting with some great people who are going to be able to hook you up with a whole bunch of ongoing new clients. Uh, what we're going to cover is the following four things. One, your marketing plan. Number two, your sales funnel. Number three, the best types of leads. Number four, how to automate and systemize your plan to scale. Now, I'll ask a question if you're all here today. What's the number one source of new business for most people here? You can pop in the chat or you can yell out. What, what is our number one source of new business? BX Networking. <laughs> That's it. That's the perfect answer. Where, do most of our, where does most of our new business come from? Referrals. Excellent. Thank you, Angela, for taking that bait for me. <laughs> it is. When you ask people where they get most of their business from, the answer generally is referrals. Uh, the problem is that most people don't have a strategy for getting referrals in their business. They just hope that their customers refer them. They might ask their customers to refer them, but there's no strategy behind that. So I believe that by creating a strategy around referrals, you'll definitely be able to generate heaps of new opportunities for your business ongoing, systematically, strategically, and, and be able to scale that accordingly. Uh, before we get into that, though, I'd love to talk about uh, your marketing plan for your business, because I believe it's important to, to understand where all this fits in. So there's kind of four key elements to your marketing plan. Uh, there's your online and digital plan. There's your network, your PR and publicity plan, and your traditional and local plan. So marketing is like having you know, four legs on a chair. If you've only got three legs on a chair, it's pretty, you know, pretty unsafe. You'll fall over. You really need to have something in all four places here to ensure that you've got a really robust marketing plan for your business. I don't know if many of you are affected in your business by what happened over the past couple of years with COVID and lockdowns and border restrictions and all sorts of things like that. Uh, and what we found is those conversations that we have with people generally took us down a path of, oh, you know, well, I was only doing this type of marketing and that couldn't happen anymore. I was only doing networking and I couldn't go to networking events anymore. So that, that dried up. So if you only have one source of new business and, and generating new business or even a couple and those opportunities dry up, then it becomes pretty challenging. Like Facebook and their algorithms and, and things like, you know, Google SEO and their algorithms, you've got iOS 14 and, and not being able to uh, track those properly. All these little things can affect our marketing plan, our results. And if you don't have, you know, the four channels operating properly, you find that you end up getting into strife. You, you don't have a nice uh, trajectory of sales growth. Okay, so that's your marketing plan. Those four elements there, obviously, uh, strategic partnerships, referral partnerships, momentum partnerships, they fit into your network and building your network. And they're a key part of your business plan there. Okay, so to understand generally how this all fits together is that we have a sales funnel for our business. Now, excuse the very crude looking drawing here, uh, but it's, it's to symbolize, we all know what a funnel looks like. And we've got our four channels of marketing, our four 
key pillars here or our legs to our chair here. Uh, and so these, these particular elements here, they all feed into our sales funnel. And a lot of people think that the more, the better, uh, but that is only the case if you've got a narrow spout at the bottom of your funnel. If this is narrow down the bottom here, fantastic, because really what you want to do is you want to pump out the qualified leads at the bottom. So you want to really prospect at the top end and get a whole bunch of people. You want to track them into your sales funnel from you know, your online and digital. So what are you doing for your SEO? How's your website you know, attracting people? Um, you know, what's happening with your, your networking? Are you attracting people into your sales funnel? there are you getting some pr some publicity are you entering business awards are you getting on the podcasts um, and the traditional local are you hitting the footpath you're talking to local businesses how are you getting out there you're doing letterbox drops so those traditional methods as well have some great place for attracting new business for us um, but once we get them into that sales time we really need to take them on a journey and that's this is the whole purpose of marketing right marketing is the act of attracting people into your business, into your sales funnel. And if you, you do all this marketing, you want to attract all these leads in. So we'll call them leads. I know that's very unpersonalized, uh, but um, that when they come down the bottom and they're qualified leads, we'll start treating them as people, individuals. But right up the top, it's actually, it's actually going to be leads. And we, we need to know how to work with those leads to turn them into qualified leads, to turn them into clients. And that's what's really, really important about our process here. Because at the top of your sales funnel, like these, these people up the top here as they're coming in, they're, they're just opting in on a website or they might, might be remotely interested. They clicked on a link somewhere. So they're not very hot. They're kind of coolish at this point here. And our trick is, our, our goal is to make sure that the people down the bottom of the sales funnel are your hot leads. And we want to make sure our hot leads are those that are really interested in buying our products and services. So we can get lots of people that are somewhat interested, the more the better, who are actually got some interest in our products and services coming in the top. But once they get down the bottom, that the pointy end of the funnel, we want to make sure that we're getting the qualified leads, the people that are interested. And it's done through a process of attracting, educating, engaging, and onboarding. So we attract at the top of the funnel, you know, we're talking the language of the customer. We're talking about what they're looking for. But then once they come into our sales funnel, we're educating and engaging. We're taking them through a sales journey, uh, which is about educating and engaging. So think about the things that you could be communicating with these people, uh, whether they're, you know, emails or, you know, their discovery calls. They're, they're ways to work through with these clients how uh, and get a better understanding of them. And usually in an automated kind of way is the best kind of way. Take them on a journey. Some are going to opt out. Some are going to stay in. That's why the funnel gets smaller, right? Because some opt out. And it's really interesting when you talk to people, and they go, oh, you know, I'm, people are opting out of my marketing. I'm like, fantastic. I'm like, what? I'm like, you, you want to weed out the people that are not interested. That's okay. Why would you want to talk to someone that is not interested in what you're doing? You know, maybe they were looking for a wedding dress and so they've clicked on all these links and downloaded all these things. But, you know, if they opt out, maybe they've already bought a dress or maybe they're already married. So you don't want to be continuing to talk to these people if they're not interested. You want to narrow down your pipeline. And then once you get down to the engagement point, that's when you start to talk to people, when you get, you've got less people. Because the less we have to talk to, the better. Because then we're talking to the people that are highly qualified. And so this is where we talk about qualified leads, getting them straight to the bottom of the funnel with referral partnerships or strategic partnerships. Because our marketing plan is all about, you know, generating referrals to people at the top end, weeding them down. Whereas our referral partners are all about generating leads uh, straight into that warmed up uh, bottom of the funnel. They bypass the whole funnel, which is fantastic. So lots of things in networking might drive people into our funnel and attract them. They might see us at an event and stuff like that. But the referral partnerships are hot leads. They're already down the bottom. They're introductions, they're warm connections. They're people looking for your products and services. So I just wanted to take you on a, on a quick journey of what that marketing and sales funnel looks like, as well as where referral partners or momentum partners or strategic partners where they fit into your marketing plan. So if there's any questions, you can jump in now.
um, and you can ask those questions. You can use the raise hand feature on your participants bar there, or you can pop a question in the chat box there and I'll answer those as we move along as well as will Loz. Now we get into the stuff that's all about the referral partnerships and the strategic partners uh, and we get into the fun stuff. Awesome. Okay, so we've got how to create a referral marketing plan. Generally, our referrals come from two sort of sources. We get our existing customers, and most people do this pretty well. We have some sort of system for extracting referrals from existing customers. Most of us actually have this. Uh, and then you have your actual referral partners. So there's two sort of referrals that you can get. So your existing customers, hopefully we're reaching out to them and talking to them about ways to uh, extract referrals. Uh, gyms do this really well, personal trainers. Hey, while you're joining up and you're really excited, can you list down five people that might be interested in a free coaching session with me? Uh, like, I don't know how many times uh, I've seen that happen over time, but uh, people go, oh yeah, cool. They write that down. Um, and for every person that joins, you get five free personal training sessions or whatever. So they, they do that as a motivation. Uh, BX is a great example for everybody that is invited to a BX event and they join, the person who invited them gets a couple of gift vouchers uh, worth 90 bucks that we give to that person. Uh, so we're rewarding people for the, the for bringing people along to that network as well. Um, so th think about ways that um, you can engage your existing customers, your raving fans, on how to invite people to become part of your business and use your products and services. Um, and I know with BX, um, and I know this would be the same with many businesses, when it's a direct referral like this, when it's somebody that's coming from a direct referral, they're like eight times out of 10 more likely to uh, become a customer than someone that's found you on Google or SEO or you know Facebook or something like that because there's already trust in this. So that's why referrals are so important. And that's why referrals feel like for most people the best source of new customers because you get a referral and you convert them. You get a referral and you convert them because they're warmed up, ready to go. And then you have your referral partners. And that's what I want to talk to you about today, really how to tap into and build referral partners because there's, there's just serious money to be made and there's serious money being left on the table all the time by so many people who don't engage a strategy around building referral partners for their business. Um, as I mentioned, referral partners, strategic partners, momentum partners, they're all the same thing. Depends on uh, which book you read. Uh, we'll call them referral partners for today. So we've got here, uh, this is this kind of shows what happens at a networking event. So most people look for uh, clients through networking and they come along to a networking event and many people first get into a networking event and start looking for these end clients. So you can imagine a room of say 15, 20 people. The number of end clients is pretty small, isn't it? You, you count the people in the room. Even today you might go, oh, who, is there anybody that's going to buy from me today? Maybe, maybe not. It's pretty small. But hey, some of these people here today might know people that need my products and services. But you know, that's even tough as well because unless we see each other, you know, a couple of times a month, we're not going to be top of mind when our ideal client uh, comes in, in front of them. They're not going to go, oh yeah, I'll think of Matt because I, you know, but if they see me regularly, they might think of me. But direct referrals, even in a networking organization are, you know, sporadic. You might get them, but you're not going to get them consistently. And that's the challenge with uh, thinking about direct referrals all the time in networking. But if you go to a networking event, seeking referral partners, this is where you can build the strategy because direct referrals are about, hey, I need them to think of me. Whereas referral partners is about creating a relationship where we think of each other. So we're both working together. And that's why referral partners have a massive opportunity for uh, working together. Excellent. So direct from referral partners. So your, your referral partners are your best source of referrals, hands down. Uh, if you want to build referrals, um, your, your end clients are going to give you some referrals that's sporadic. You're in your networking, they're going to give you some referrals that's sporadic. Build the referral partners and you'll actually get a consistent number. And the more you want, the more referral partners you build. And then you want to systemize and automate your whole process. Anything with your business. Uh, I don't know if you guys know Dale Beaumont, 
but he is an absolute systems fanatic. And he will tell you that if you want to build a business, you have to build a business with systemization and automation if you want to scale it. And that means if you don't want to work 50, 60, 70 hours a week, you need to have some systems in your business to help you achieve a business for lifestyle. I don't know how many people go into business here um, and it'd be an interesting poll to t- take, but how many of us went into business and thought, I want to go into business to work my guts out, um, to work my guts out again, to work my guts out again so that I don't really have much of a, a, a nighttime, a weekend and that sort of stuff. I'm not sure many people really want to do that. Uh, but if you want to generate the income to generate the lifestyle you want, then you have to build the systems and automation into the business to enable you to scale that business. And as I said, it's one of the fastest and highest return on investment ways to build your business. Okay, so if you're looking to build referral partnerships, so another business that serves all the same clients that you do and doesn't compete with you, this is the, the this is what you need to do. So just clarifying um, some examples of some referral partners for us all as well. Is if I don't know, you guys are all master networkers here with Jason. Uh, but if you're if you're thinking who is my referral partner, I'm not sure who my referral partner is. I'll give you some examples. And if there's anybody that doesn't or, or can't think of their types of referral partners, you might pop into the chat box what you do. And um, we'll give you some examples of your referral partners. Loz is the master at this. So um, if you want to pop into the chat box, uh, what you do. So if you're an accountant or bookkeeper, a a finance broker, whatever you do, uh, we can give you some examples of some referral partners. But if you want to brainstorm and work out who your referral partners are yourself, think about right now, what other businesses out there are serving the same types of clients that you do in your business? that don't compete with you. I might throw to Loz. Loz, Loz is the master connector. So Loz, yes. do you want to, uh, Phil's talking about graphic <laughs> designers. Who is, I, yeah, I think so it gave you a good one to start with. Absolutely. So thinking about your clients that you work with in the graphic design space, Phil, who else they're essentially thinking about your client and who else they pay money to. So it might be, uh, you know, it could be a, a brand. They might've had a brand refresh. So it could be a brand branding person, um, other sorts of digital marketing agencies, SEO people, business coaches, trusted advisors like accountants, bookkeepers, financial planners, they're all having discussions with business owners about growing their business. Um, so there's a, a couple of examples. But essentially, if you put that your end client on it right then, who they are on a piece of paper and then just think about all the pay money to that don't compete with you, potentially they're all the sorts of people that are your are your referral partners. So for Derek, health and wellbeing communication and performance trainer. So I would say for you, Derek, people like HR consultants. So HR consultants are looking after multiple business owners um, and there's an opportunity for you to collaborate and bring in um, sort of the resources that you have um, and also those trusted advisors. So account- everybody wants access to accountants and their databases because they look after they look after lots of business owners, right? It's, it's trying to align yourself with people, particularly in that trusted advisor space that are forward thinking when it comes to referral partners because they do get hit up a lot in terms of people wanting to connect in with them. So HR consultants and other types of business coaches and trainers, maybe sales um, coaches as well that don't compete with you, Derek, would be good. Um, leadership coaching as well. So I would say Angela, also HR consultants. Often when you have the same type of referral partner as someone else, so for instance, for you, Angela, and for you, um, Derek, um, if you were both looking as HR consultants as referral partners, that means that you, in fact, make great referral partners with each other because you share a commonality in terms of the referral partners that you are trying to attract. Um, Leadership coaching, also anyone, so uh, allied health professionals, you know, they, they um, hear a lot about what people, what are going on for people in their lives. So they could be great people for you as well. Real estate, so that's that's awesome. That's like all the trusted buyers, mortgage brokers, insurance brokers, anyone that does anything in the home, um, people that maybe coach tradies and support tradies, um, all of those sorts of people that also tap into that home environment. Um, Martha, confidence coaching for women leaders and people who want to transition into coaching. Oh, that's a good one. I think also maybe recruitment agencies could be good for that, people that help people with recruitment that are looking to go out, people that are coaching 
Um, say someone that coaches people with LinkedIn could be a great person um, in that respect. People that do branding and rebranding, so photographers that help with the rebrand shoots and that type of thing, they could be great people. Oh, I've got a big list. I might have to hurry up a bit more. <laughs> Real estate investment, so in the non-traditional space. So once again, those trusted advisors, I would say wealth creation um, coaches as well, NAS, would be good in that respect, um, but also the people that support you know, tradition in traditional real estate space. So those mortgage brokers, you know, financial planners, accountants, bookkeepers. There we go. <laughs> so, and I, the the best advice Loz gave there for everybody is you write down the name of your one of your end clients. So one of your clients you love, and you'd love a lot more of them. So think about it as a person. You can all think about right now who is your favorite client. If you write their name down on a bit of paper, and then you go, okay, where else do they spend their money? Where else do they spend their money? If you can identify who the other business types are, the other business types where they spend their money and write it all around it, uh, they're going to be your referral partners. And the trick with networking is tapping in and asking your network to connect you with those types of businesses. If they can connect you with ideal referral partners, it's a fantastic connection. It's a really good connection for them to make as well because you're not going to be selling to the person you're being connected to. You're going to be collaborating with them to help them find more clients from your client base and they'll be helping you find more clients from their client base. And really, it's it's not you have to find me new clients. It's like, hey, this is what I do. Let's get to know each other a little better. Once we do, you're going to think of people that might need my services and I'll do the same. Meanwhile, what we can do is as we catch up on a regular basis, there's other ways we can help each other. We can share some social media content. We can like, comment, share stuff across LinkedIn so that we're helping build our brand reach. Now, if you've got five to 10 referral partners all helping you do that and sharing and, and liking and commenting on your posts on LinkedIn. Imagine how many more people are going to see your LinkedIn brand out there as well, your personal, your business brand out there. Uh, really powerful, right? So you build the referral partnerships. You're helping them do the same with their referral partners as well. And keeping top of mind with the referral partner helps you then uh, be connected with their clients when they need your products and services. They'll think of you when we're in front of those people on a regular basis. So what we need to do from here is we need to start to systemize and automate to scale. So we want to successfully implement a referral marketing system into our business to create systems automation to drive results. So we all need a CRM. Every business should have a CRM. There's some really good, pretty cheap solutions you can get out there and you can start to scale those up and do some really intricate solutions as well. Um, they, they sort of go, I think active campaigns are pretty good starting points about uh, maybe I think about 15 to kind of $25 a month, um, but it's well worth it. Like it's well worth the investment because what it's going to help you do is take all those people at the top of your funnel and scale them down to a small number of people that we can then be talking to directly uh, and then converting them to paying clients. So what we want to do is get a CRM. So everyone should write down an action to write down. I'm, if I don't have one, I'm going to get a CRM. Uh, I'm, I'm certainly, certainly sure some of the coaches on the call would be agreeing with me on that one there. The next thing we want to do is, and by the way, Google Sheets is not a CRM. So if we're operating in Google Sheets, time to scale up and to move across into a proper CRM platform that's going to help you manage these leads. Now, then we want to automate our Google and Facebook review requests. So when we get Google, we want to be sending out to our clients and people engaging with us the process for getting Google and Facebook reviews because this helps us build our brand, but also helps people come back into your funnel as well. Great Google reviews generate trust in your brand. So when people are being referred to you, they then suss you out online and they go, oh, that company's got a couple hundred Google reviews. That's fantastic. You know, that means I've got trust in them straight away. Whereas if you've only got one or two reviews or, you know, a handful of reviews or maybe none at all, when people are looking at us up online, they're not trusting that we're, you know, necessarily what the referral partner is saying. The referral partner is going, hey, this person's amazing. Go, go check them out. Uh, if they check you out online, do you stack up? So things like your Google and Facebook reviews are great social proof. 
Uh, I also think you should have a really sharp LinkedIn profile as well, because these days everyone checks us out on LinkedIn. And, uh, you know, if that doesn't stack up to what you're professing that you do or match the image that you're putting out there, then uh, people might go, well, that's a bit strange. It doesn't, it's not really congruent with who the referral partner is uh, talking about here. So make sure that you've got a great LinkedIn profile, really clear. And um, it says what you do. It's current, it's up to date. And make sure you're automating that whole Google and Facebook review process. So also build into your onboarding process the request for referrals, like I said, with the gym member, uh, the PT, where they ask, you know, give me five names of people that you've got. Uh, your clients are most excited about being with you when they first start. They've, they're excited. They've, they've committed. They've paid. They're ready to go. They're pumped up. This is when you can ask them to refer directly to you. Uh, so with BX as, as an idea, we actually give all of our new members a couple of vouchers and say, hey, these have got $45 value each. Go out and share them with somebody that you would like to have alongside you at networking, one of your favorite clients or a friend that you know that's in business. Go out there and share that because we know they're excited. They've joined the network. We want that love that they've got for what's happening now for them and their business to be shared with someone else who can then come and enjoy that experience with them as well. So think about in your business, when you're onboarding a new client, how can you build that request process for referrals into your process? And I think we should all reward our clients for exceptional referrals. Now, there's a fine line here as well. I, I think paid referrals in some industries are necessary, but generally the best kinds of rewards to referrals aren't, I'm going to give you X percent of the sale. The best kind of reward is when someone gives you a genuine referral, have a process where, you know, a dependent on the value of the sale, you have a reward mechanism that you build in as an automation, but something that happens so it happens automatically, but it happens proportionate to the sale and as a super thank you. And you might change the process um, throughout the year. It might be a bottle of wine that you send to uh, your referral partners when they send your client. And then you might flip that to, you know, something else later on, like, you know, a bunch of movie tickets or something like that, just as a way to say, hey, thank you so much for the referral. We really value that you've uh, referred that us and recommended us. Uh, so it's not like, every client you give us will give you 10% of the sale. That's really impersonal. I think just recognizing often that somebody's genuinely referred to you, even if they're a strategic partner, referral partner, it has huge value just to recognize that proportionate to the sale. You know, if you're, if you're a retail shop and your average sale is, you know, $15, you're not going to send them a, a bottle of wine for sending someone your way, but you might send them, you know, something that's proportionate or for every X number of people that you connect in, you might send, uh, you know, give them a bottle of wine or whatever, you just work it out so that it makes sense. But that, that reward goes a long way because then it seems organic and it seems like, yes, you you really care about them. Uh, and then you want to rinse, repeat, rinse, and repeat, rinse, and repeat. So keep that process flowing and flowing and flowing and flowing round and round and round um, so that you can systemize and scale. Um, so I'll give you a bit of an idea about uh, a look at, uh, this, I know this is really hard to read and it's not about trying to work out specifically what this um, is. It's about an idea of what a campaign can look like inside your CRM that can generate leads into your business. And, and this is super important because you need to systemize your business. You need to automate that whole referral process. So when people are coming in to your sales funnel, you're talking to them. So the, like you've got here a whole bunch of actions that people are taking and different courses of action depending on which and, and how they're interacting with you. You wanna be talking to people based on their interaction with you. So if somebody is ignoring your emails, you're not gonna send more and more and more emails to them. If somebody's clicking all your links in the email, you can start talking to them specifically about the types of stuff they're clicking in your emails. Think about that journey you wanna take someone from, where from the top of the funnel, all the way through the process down to the bottom of the funnel. It's super important. That way you'll get more people to go into your sales and marketing funnel. You'll, you'll be able to engage and educate the right ones to, to take the right actions. And then we'll be talking to the right people to make great decisions. And then they'll be ready to go. Excellent. We are at the end, Jace. One more slide to, to show uh, here. I, I just said to Lars, I need a sign like we have at BX to go two minutes. <laughs> I've got 28 minutes and 30 seconds I'm at. I'm on my last slide, so I'm, I'm perfect. 
I'm perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> and so my last slide here is, and this is really where we at BX believe that we've reimagined the process of networking. Uh, but really, uh, I think it's so important for everybody that when you're networking and you're out there building partnerships, that selling shouldn't be something that happens. So when you walk into a networking room, don't pull out your business card as the first thing you do. You know, ask a question about the person that's in front of you and think about ways that you can help them. The more you help, the universe will return in kind, uh, but you don't think of it in that way. You just go, I, I want to help as many people here as possible. The more people that I can help here, um, the better. You know, I feel better about myself. They're going to love me for it. And if they want to refer to me or want to you know, do business with me or want to build partnerships with me, I'm sure they will. But my focus is on them. And when you're selling, your focus is usually on yourself. So no selling is, should be a rule for networking. And it's all about building connections. Networking is about building connections. So knowing people, building relationships with people, we've all heard the know, like, and trust. That's, that's the critical element of networking. When we've got those relationships with people, the know, like, trust relationship, of course, they'll refer to you. Of course, they'll do business with you. They actually buy from us. We don't sell to them, but they still buy from us when we build those relationships, when we're in the room on a regular basis and we're catching up because that's how relationships are built. Uh, and certainly your goal for networking is to build those referral partnerships, building the partnerships that are going to generate a lot of ongoing new business. And I know that statistically across, we've got thousands of members in BX, and I know that statistically the average member will generate about $20,000 per referral partner per year. And we aim to help them get five to 10 referral partners over a 12 month process. And so, and I've, I was chatting with a, a lady this morning who joined our network um, I think about five weeks ago, I think it was five weeks ago. And I was down in West Melbourne with her in an event this morning. And uh, the last time I spoke to her, I actually, someone spoke to me and said, oh, you know, this lady, blah, blah, um, really excited. She just announced on one of our shout outs, she'd just done $18,000 in a few weeks. Um, so I went up to her and I said, oh, hey, I heard you did a, um, you know, you got 80,000, a few new clients, like really quickly. She goes, I'm up to 25 now. I'm like, okay. So I just know that, and I, I did the maths back with her today. And I'm like, talk to me about your process. Talk to me about your referral partners. How, you, how often are you reaching out to these people? And when people follow the process and they are about not selling, about building connections and about building the referral partners, um, then they will hands down make, you know, a ton of money. And um, the great thing about that is, when you're generating lots of cash and lots of revenue for your business, the networking is actually fun. You know, it's not a stressful process. There's not, oh, I've got to pay for this or I've got to pay for that or I've got a membership fee because you covered all that. You're just enjoying yourself. You're having breakfast with friends. And that's what we love about what we do at BX. We help people just uh, build a business. So it's a lifestyle business so they can enjoy breakfast, lunch or dinner with their friends on a regular basis. Um, so thanks for being with us this afternoon. I Thank hope you. that's been of value to you all. Thanks, Loz helping out as well this afternoon and um thanks jace for having us ah thank you for being here can we can we do the stock share beautiful Mate, can i good. just answer that one question jason that um john had yes I, I was about to bring that up yeah all right cool so in terms of um when you're speaking to referral partners how do you reassure them that about privacy issues honestly you're just building a relationship as Matt said with that referral partner and if you and the whole idea of speaking to your referral partner on a regular basis to stay front of mind with them is that then when they're talking to their clients that potentially need what you have you're the person they're going to think of and they're going to introduce you to that person so you're not going in cold and just you know they're not going to say this person needs a new website or this person needs a graphic designer they're going to introduce you so it's a super warm introduction so in that respect, you haven't, um, you know, there's no privacy issues whatsoever. Does that answer the question, John? You should generally be able to get about nine in 10 people that come in front of you from a referral, a warm referral, will sign up to whatever you're selling. Hmm. Uh, because those warm introductions are people that have gone, I need X. The referral partner goes, hey, well, I know who does X, so I'm going to connect you with them and they're awesome. And that warm introduction means that they're ready to go. So they're ready to buy because they've told the person they're ready to buy. Mm. The person who's referred them has edified you. And then you have a conversation. You're not saying, 
you need to buy my thing. You're having a conversation. They're ready to buy. You're just, you're just building a little bit of a relationship. So then you can go, great, let's get started. And I'll tell you what, nine out of 10, 90% of people will do business with you off a referral. It's really, really simple. Um, and the trust relationship is really key. Fantastic. Now, if anybody wants to, that doesn't know, Matt and Lois wants to connect a little bit further, instead of us jamming up the chat room, weird emails and everything like that, you're, you're all part of the network. Just flick me a message through the network because I have your emails and I will do a formal int email introduction for you guys. So I know that most of you already know Matt or Lois or both, but if you don't, as I say, just flick, just find me on the network flick me a message and I'll do a formal introduction for you guys, not an issue. So Matt, Loz, thank you very much. That brings us to uh, a bit of a close. So we'll stop